Welcome to this video tutorial on Addison's disease. Addison's disease is a rare chronic endocrine system disorder that occurs when the adrenal glands do not produce adequate amounts of steroid hormones. The endocrine system refers to the collection of glands that secrete hormones in the body. When these hormone levels become too high or too low, problems occur such as diabetes, thyroid disease, growth disorders, or sexual dysfunction, among others. The adrenal glands located above the kidneys are part of the endocrine system that produce a variety of hormones, including cortisol, aldosterone, and DHEA. Cortisol and aldosterone play key roles in the functioning of the human body, including regulation of blood pressure, metabolism, and the body's response to stress. The body uses DHEA to make androgens and estrogens, the male and female sex hormones. Addison's disease may also be called primary hypoadrenalism, primary adrenal insufficiency, chronic adrenal insufficiency, or hypocortisolism. The disease is named after Thomas Addison, who first described the condition in 1849. Addison's disease is caused by problems with the adrenal gland. Therefore, it is often referred to as primary adrenal insufficiency. It is caused by autoimmune disorders, various infections, and other causes that are rare. Adrenal insufficiency or cortisol deficiency results from alteration in any step in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA axis. The HPA axis is a complex set of direct influences and interactions between three endocrine glands, the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands. These interactions control reactions to stress and regulate body processes, including the immune system, digestion, mood and emotions, sexuality, and energy storage and use. This dysfunction may be temporary or permanent. There are four possible ways through which the adrenal glands produce insufficient cortisol. First, and most commonly, primary adrenal insufficiency is a result of autoimmune destruction of the adrenal glands. It is common for these patients to have other autoimmune diseases as well. Secondly, infections, such as tuberculosis, can destroy the adrenal glands, as well as cytomegalovirus, meningitis, and some fungal infections can also lead to Addison's disease. Third, adrenal dysgenesis, in which the gland has not formed adequately during development. This is genetic and very rare. And fourth, impaired steroidogenesis occurs when the gland is present but biochemically unable to produce cortisol, sometimes caused by certain medication interference. Signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency include hyperpigmentation or darkening of the skin. This is most visible on scars, skin folds, pressure points, lips, and lining of the cheek. Chronic fatigue, orthostatic hypotension, which is lightheadedness when standing, muscle weakness, loss of appetite, weight loss, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, headache, anxiety and mood changes, sweating, and craving salty foods. The slowly progressing symptoms are often ignored until a stressful event such as surgery, an illness, or pregnancy causes them to worsen. Addisonian crisis is a collection of symptoms that indicates severe adrenal insufficiency. It is a medical emergency and if not treated, can cause death. Characteristic symptoms include profound physical weakness, sudden severe pain in the lower back, abdomen, or legs, severe vomiting and diarrhea resulting in dehydration, low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, fever, convulsions, peripheral vascular collapse, and renal shutdown. The diagnosis of Addison's disease involves several tests. Blood work may reveal the following, hyponatremia or low sodium due to the loss of aldosterone production. Hyperkalemia, or high potassium, is also due to the loss of aldosterone production. Hypercalcemia, or high calcium, hypoglycemia, or low glucose, and low cortisol. ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulation test, measures the level of cortisol in the blood before and after an injection of synthetic ACTH. ACTH signals the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. And if adrenal glands are damaged, the output of cortisol is limited or non-existent. An ultrasound or CT scan of the abdomen may be done. It can show abnormalities in the adrenal glands. 
antibody blood tests can detect antibodies associated with autoimmune Addison's disease. The treatment for Addison's disease usually involves one of the following. Lifelong hormone replacement therapy is given to correct the levels of steroid hormones. It's usually given orally, but injections can be given if the patient is vomiting. Hydrocortisone or prednisone is given to replace cortisol, and fludrocortisone is given to replace aldosterone. The patient needs plenty of sodium intake, especially during heavy exercise, hot weather, diarrhea, or a stressful situation, such as an infection or operation. Treatment for Addisonian crisis requires immediate medical care with IV administration of hydrocortisone and saline solution with dextrose. As a nurse, it is important to remind the patient with Addison's disease to wear a medical alert bracelet that reads adrenal insufficiency at all times. Keep extra medication handy. Missing just one day of therapy may be dangerous, so it's important to have an extra supply with them, as well as keeping an injectable form of corticosteroids on hand in case of an emergency. Stay in contact with their doctor to make sure the replacement hormones are adequate, but not excessive. Adjustments in the doses or timing may need to be made. And now let's take a look at a review of what we've been talking about. Addison's disease is an endocrine or hormonal disorder that occurs when the adrenal glands are damaged and cannot produce enough of the adrenal hormone cortisol. The adrenal hormone aldosterone may be lacking also. Typical symptoms include weakness, fatigue, and hyperpigmentation. If not treated, an adrenal crisis can lead to death. Diagnosis is confirmed through hormonal blood tests and possibly imaging studies and treatment involves replacing the hormones that the adrenal glands are not making. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on Addison's disease, and don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook.